Hello, Isaac, and thank you for choosing ChiefTutor.com, training videos on Chief Architect. Okay, you'd written in that you'd want to use uh, the dimension tools in X2 for elevations and uh, how to change the automatic dimensions in the manual dimensions. Okay, <clears throat> well, the basic tools for the dimension tools over here, and it's got the drop down like most things in Chief Architect. And the way to set it up is to start with the ruler icon and just double click it and your dimension defaults will start up. You can also reach it into the defaults icon here, but here we go. The dimension defaults, now that I have it open, we'll go to the setup tab and we'll notice that we can change its height and its reach. We can go into primary font and change the way it displays inches or feet, centimeters, whatnot. We can also go to locate objects and that's where you'd want to go to locate the correct sides of things. For instance, I like to locate the surface um, excuse me, the wall dimension layer and not the surface. Um, I like to get the primary wall side only, but you can choose both. Uh, here's sides and corners that the cabinets will get picked up in the elevations or um, in the dimensions on the floor plan. Other objects that can pick up. I like to do the sides. Some people like to do centered, so we'll go like that. My arrow key is set to something like that with black. Again, I can change the size, I can change the font. So this is the area where you just set up your basics. And once you've got your basics set up, you just auto-generate, as you know, and it goes through. Now, like I was saying, I like to set up my uh, layers. And you'll see there, if I go back to my dimension tools, that uh, when I was speaking of the locate objects, wall dimension layer, that's where I wanted it to pick up the actual framing in there. Okay, but you're more concerned with elevations, and so let's do that. Let's go to our elevation tool, and I'm just going to run an elevation up against this wall. And I'll see i got my cabinets here, and maybe you want to um, use the dimension tool for that. Well, using the different ones here are all pretty helpful. The end-to-end -end dimension is probably your best when you're doing this version. And what you can do is just select that, and holding down left mouse button, you can just run your cursor through where you want your dimensions to be displayed both left or right whichever way you want to go and then of course when you click on it you can move it in and out that's one way of doing it I'm gonna go ahead and close this window another way of doing it and if you're having a hard time getting those individual areas or you want like just the door or just the drawer or something is when I run my individual elevations I can go up here to CAD and simply convert this view to CAD detail. So click OK and it creates a new screen. So let me show you how many screens I have open now. How vertically. I've got my plan file, I've got my elevation that I took and generated, and then I had it converted to CAD lines. So let's assume this open and now I can go back to my dimension tools and I can get exact. I can get like between here and here or the full width of the door or something. So it's real easy, and what's nice is it's also saved in the library. So when I close out all the windows, I can go back to my project browser library, go into the project browser, CAD details, and there's the elevation that I took. I just double click it to get back in it, which is really nice and easy. And you can save that now. CAD detail will save with your plan. So that's the easy way to do it. You also wanted to change the automatic dimensions and manual dimensions. Well, again, um, these are the automatic generated ones. When you click on the auto exterior dimensions, it just generates these dimensions around here. Your manual ones are the ones you'd want to set up inside. Like, for instance, if I want to do interior dimensions, I'd simply select my interior dimension. And again, holding down my left mouse, uh, I'm just going to run my cursor all the way through the house. And it'll give me my interior dimensions which makes it very easy and quick. And if we zoom in, we'll see that it stopped at the walls to give us that dimension, 18 feet here, 16 there, 10 there. So real quickly, it got all my dimensions. And from there, I can manipulate it. Like for instance, see how it's 21, two from here to here. I can simply select this wall and say, actually, I want it to be more like 30 feet. Type in 30 feet, hit enter. And then it moves that wall down exactly to the 30 foot marker. So that's how you play with their dimensions. It's uh, pretty straightforward once you get used to it, but it is tricky. I know the first couple times I used the dimension tool, it a little confusing at first, but uh, just um, utilize the end-to-end -end and interior. End-to-end -end for 
uh, very specific things from like the cabinet to your wall. And then of course your interior dimensions for all things interior. And point to points whenever you want to do something that's a very unique uh, stretch. For instance, like the corner of this cabinet to say the corner of that cabinet. It'll create these little marker points, these little X marker points, and run a dimension across them. So that's how you use that, utilize that. Okay, I hope you learned something new and I'll talk to you guys again soon.